Hey everyone, Dave Greco here again. Hope everyone's having a great week and uh, weekend. We're just starting a new week here. And I wanted to bring another tutorial to you guys. I've had a lot of people on stream and through my Discord uh, talk to me about possibly making a video about folds. I'm no expert on folds, but I can sure share anything that my process goes on how I try to create them. So I figure we can dive right in here. Um, I'm gonna paint a commission piece I'm actually working on right now to see how I may tackle some of this. Uh, this is uh, for a client, it's a version of her as Terra from Final Fantasy VI, which is pretty awesome. And I have this kind of weird cotton candy looking cloak coming off her. I threw some kind of general shapes in there. And then we can kind of try to create some folds to make it look a little bit more like fabric. For me specifically, and I think this is kind of part of what I want to show today is, I don't think I need to make it specifically, you know, look like an exact cloak. There's something kind of magical by creating these kind of like weird bulbous shapes, right? And then kind of work from there. All right, so let's see here. I So I made this shape. I'm trying to fit them all on the screen at the same time, some reference that I'm looking at now and kind of what we've created here. And I found some cool like uh, pillow, billowing cloaks and cape reference. Uh, like this is pretty cool. And what I'm really looking for when I find good reference is how to incorporate the shape design of that reference into the piece that I'm working on. Like I don't wanna copy this exact cloak, but there's elements that I can learn from it, right? So there's some really cool parts of this cloak that I'm looking at. And it's kind of these larger folds. Let me put this on a new layer so you guys can see. I think it's just, I think it's good to help identify kind of what I'm looking at. And that's how you can take it into your own work. It's like these folds right here are pretty cool and how these this kind of thing works, right? And maybe we can try to bring some of that into our own. So the biggest area I could see, and I can actually do this with a darker color right now. I don't mind too much about drawing over areas, but creating this kind of shape, I'm almost creating like an outline of these larger flowing shapes, right? We could keep create an aspect of this, this thing right here that we're seeing. So I hope we can kind of see this back. Oh, actually, let me move this not behind my camera. Okay, right there. And then I'll move this over. I am learning how to do this and teach and help you guys as much as possible, as much as you're trying to grab off these videos. So I'm just gonna loosely color this in. So really what I'm looking for is like large silhouettes and then we can build from there. So we kind of see this thing. And you have to think about these, if you drape this whole thing out, it'd be flat, right? So they're creating these kind of shapes on top of each other and how they fold and create shadows underneath. So I'm just kind of gently grabbing some little elements from it. And I think when you're looking at creating folds, designs like this, that you never have to be exact, right? You're just looking for cool little elements that you might possibly be able to add in. I think keeping these nice little flowy lines helps quite a bit when doing it. And like this one behind, I can actually keep a lot of this one back here. And even this piece right here, whoops, maybe we can bring some of that down here, which would be pretty cool. We can do something like this right here, bring that in. Yeah, who knows? It's always worth just trying out these little shapes and see what happens. We can get rid of this thing. And then this top part, it's almost like you're trying to understand kind of where these, what these folds are doing, right? And then this one will come up here. And this top part is actually, we can just make up that it's, maybe it's coming from this top thing. It doesn't have to make a whole lot of sense, I feel like half the time. Like you basically just have to sell the idea that it makes sense. I think if you can wing a lot of it and supports the type of design that you want to do, that works. There you go. So we kind of have these weird folds. This bottom one may not work down here, but we'll try it out anyway. And so what I'm going to do after I'm going to create a new layer, like I usually do, I'm going to make a multiply layer. I'm just going to change my DG main brush the way it normally is. 
make this multiply so I don't want to lose the line drawing underneath. Let me just drop the opacity on this one a little bit. And really we can kind of start cutting out what's the underlying underneath this, right? So opacity did not drop down, there we go. Right, and you're just kind of slowly blending out these shapes. Now this one, this one right here is gonna be sitting above this layer down here, so let's just knock this whole thing back. Then we have this real dark area underneath. We're trying to just slowly get some of the values that they have here and bring it into this one. Like I said, we're not going so crazy and figuring out every little folded detail. I think if we can just get the idea of the folds, that could sell us, that could work for this piece, right? This cloak is not the star. No, it might be a nice pop of color and a cool part of the piece, but we don't have to go crazy with it. And this is a, a good, maybe, video on just, you know, how incorporate reference into your piece as well. I always talk about the best way to use reference, really, is create your piece then shoot reference and use reference after the fact to help identify some shapes and shadows. What you don't want to do is shoot reference and then create a piece based off that reference because it gets so stiff. It's hard to discover a lot of things that way. I feel like every piece I've done that way usually um, kind of backfires on me and then I have to remember I'm like, oh, it's because I shot the reference first or I try to create a piece based on this one reference. But I can already tell right away that there's more of like a real folds and layering thing happening here, right? This feels like layers of something of a flat plane that's folded up and curled, right? And we're gonna do that throughout this entire thing here. Let me grab some more of this and say even this top one. This I like this really top pillowing part up here on this top reference. So maybe we can figure out some things that meld well with that. Bring that over here. And this is just a good way to use uh, some internet reference that you find. Yeah, this is a piece I've been working on for a few days now. I'm actually pretty excited for this piece. Uh, they're gonna be using this for a uh, She's gonna be using this for merchandise and stuff for her stream. It's for another uh, another streamer that's commissioning this work. So you can see that there is actually a fold here, and what the, it'll actually be a little darker on this side, as you can see, because the light is hitting up top here. And then at the same what, same time, we're gonna darken this up so this top part feels like it's coming up and catching on the light. You know, depending on what we do, we can kind of like, oh, so this is just like lots of weird things folding into each other. Let's just fold this back and, you know, there's a lot of more of like weird straightish lines. You can see how these, how fabric, especially if it starts feeling like thicker fabric, starts folding in these kind of like straight areas. And we can just kind of make up these other ones and just pepper in different, different little fold areas and stuff like that. You know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's a large cloak that she's wearing, that's for sure. But then I can go through this whole thing and kind of do the same, see how this all folds. We can, and now I'm pretty much over here, I'm just seeing kind of where it's working on this other side. And then I, I'll make up some more folded areas. And I feel like if I can make up a bunch of areas and then find a reference that I feel like a little bit better in some other areas, then um, and the piece will work pretty good. All right. So we'll just see, because this comes down, then we can do, thanks to this whole area up here. And also, so when we finish this piece, we'll get this piece up on Instagram. Uh, definitely come over to the Instagram, check it out. We post up a lot of work that we do on stream and off stream. I'll put a link down below and I'll put it up on screen, on screen right now. It's just Dave Greco underscore art. You can check that out. That's uh, It means a ton to see a lot of you come over from YouTube over to the Twitch channel and over to Instagram. It's fantastic. So that's pretty much uh, how I would tackle this. And then basically, it kind of goes into my normal rendering. 
Uh, I'll start cleaning up a lot of this stuff back here. But I think the biggest idea is simplifying a lot of these shapes. It's so really, I kind of create like an outline, maybe a couple values on top of it. I'm not getting super bogged down on like real dark areas, real highlights. Get to the stage and see how it feels and then go from there. Uh, hopefully this is enough information. At least get you guys started on how to simplify folds and that's really all I do. It doesn't take a lot of time to really start diving in and start messing around with some fabric. This can go for, you know, if you're doing clothing design, anything like that, and kind of how to tackle reference or bring a little reference back into your own work. Uh, so guys, thank you so much. I actually have a kind of a series that I'm going to be starting here on the YouTube channel soon. So I'm working out some small details of it. So you're going to see a lot more content coming from me very shortly, which I am super, super excited for. And it's going to have a lot more interaction with you guys and me hanging out with you all the time, which is super awesome. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, definitely, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Really means a lot. Really helps the channel grow. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.